Well, hello. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Welcome to Mornings with Lady T Talks with your um, host, um, Talana Bard Allen, known as Lady T. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am a transformational life relationship and health and wellness coach, a change agent, and a problem solver. I thank you guys so much for tuning in today. It is a pleasure to be here with you. Um, as you come in, just continue to say good morning, say hi. Tell me where you're from on TikTok so I can know um, how far our reach is going um share this video on your timeline or share it with somebody that you know that could use it and tag your friends and family um in this video we are talking about the power of love on this week puerto rico welcome puerto rico we're talking about the power of love and today is part five um we've been live every single day this week um to share this message with you um so come on in say good morning say hi share this tag somebody um and if you are watching the replay hashtag replay so thank you guys again for tuning in every single broadcast i start with um affirmations um and our confessions and what we say about ourselves. i'm a firm believer that what you speak over your life you'll have if you want your future to change if you want your destiny to change if you want your life to change then you have to change what you say all right so join in with me if you don't have a confession you're more than welcome to have this and write it down and say it every day and if you want me to email you a copy all you have to do is inbox me and say confessions and i will email it to you along with sending me your email address all right so here we go i am what God says I am. I can do all that God says I can do. I'm not weak. I'm strong. I'm not bound. I'm free. I'm not sick. I'm healed. I am living on top. I am prospering in all that I do. I am thriving and flourishing in my mind in my business, on my job, in my family, in my relationships, and in my life. I am growing into the person that God has designed me to be. I am a money magnet. Money flows to me with ease. I attract millions. I am able to give more because I have more to give. I am healed. I am delivered and I am set free. I am whole and complete in Christ. I forgive easily and quickly. I am grateful for this day. I am a believer and this is my confession and I'm sticking to it. Like I said, what are you saying over your life? Do you want your situation, your circumstances, or even your life to change, to be better, to, to go into a different direction, to move into the direction that, that you know in your heart that it's supposed to be going? We, we allow life. We allow things. Um, yes, thank you so much. We allow things in our life to, to deter us or to distract us from where we want to go in life. And so we get caught up in the, the situations and circumstances that we are going through and we kind of forget that we're the controller of our life right we're the ones who speak the things in our life that we want to change so i encourage you today to speak something positive in your life change your confession change your words and allow your life to take the course that it was designed to take okay so this week we've been talking about the power of love and this has truly tremendously blessed my life um and i know that it's blessing others as well so if this is your first day tuning in with mornings with lady t talks welcome and thank you so much for tuning in so the first day we talked about the scripture that we've been dealing with this week is first corinthians chapter 13 the entire chapter right um so go read it out of the king james version out of the message version and out of the amplified version i've been dealing with the king james and the message bible because that is pretty much the clearest way or it's easier to go side by side so every single morning this week we've talked about it so i encourage you to read those chapters that chapter out of those versions so that you get an understanding of what it is exactly that i'm talking about on this week so thank you again for tuning in um we um monday we also talked about let me just get to my notes on monday love never gives up right love charity never suffers long we talked about the the importance of never giving up and, and suffering long and what that looks like and how god died for us and all of those things love cares more for others than self and love is kind we talked about that we talked about what kind was and all those great things love does not want what it doesn't have charity suffers long or wants it envy if not so love doesn't envy people right we talked about love doesn't strut love 
or charity vaunteth not itself up we talked about that doesn't have a swole head is not puffed up doesn't force itself on others and doesn't behave unseemly that's what we talked about on yesterday um so thank you for tuning in today today we're talking about just trying to keep all my notes together so today we're talking about it doesn't it i'm sorry isn't love isn't always me first and love doesn't seek her own listen it is so easy to make it about us, right? This person did this. You don't understand. Um, this person hurt my feelings. This person said this about me. This person lied on me. This person stole from me. This person um, did this to me. This, per I mean, listen, the list goes on. I can literally say all those things. Um, I, I li That's a question I can answer in a different, if you want to inbox me for that one. Um, not, not necessarily. It is, it is something that God wants us to do, but not necessarily. If you give your life to the Lord and you die, you're not going to go to hell. Right. So, um, but if that's something that you can do, then I encourage you to do it, but that's a whole nother topic. All right. Sorry about that guys. So it isn't about you, right? This is something I say all the time. It's not about me. It's not about what I want. It's not about, and we say, well, I don't put myself on a back burner long enough and I done did this. Well, we've made it about ourselves. We've made it about ourselves long enough. Now it's time to make it about somebody else. It is time to make it about the work that God has for us to do. So you have to tell yourself today and every day, it's not about you. It's about the work that you've been called to do. This is the work that we were called to do. Think about our greatest example. That's the only example that I can literally give you. Um, is that we look at the example of Jesus Christ, the one who came here and was on an assignment that that assignment, I can't even imagine having to know that you're coming to earth coming to the world to have to die that is huge right if if we knew that our assignment was to come here and to die for people that lied on us that stabbed us in the back that mistreated us that didn't treat us right how many of us can honestly say that we would have went through with it i can't say that for people that i don't know i can't say that for people that i don't um think whatever there was no guarantee it wasn't like if you do this then everybody's going to turn and serve you that wasn't the guarantee the the thing was he said i'll take the chance i'll take the risk and he took the chance and the risk for me he took the chance and the risk for you because he loves you so much right we're talking about the power of love we're talking about what love can actually look like right love doesn't hurt love doesn't try to get people back love doesn't um it doesn't always look out for itself, right? It looks out for other people. And we say, well, if I do that, then what about what's going to happen to me? Well, guess what? Anything can happen to you if you do or you don't. You can look out for yourself and things can still happen to you. So what you have to understand is not about, um, it's not about how I can get this person back, how I can do this to this person, how I can get a revenge, right? We're going to talk about all that today. Hopefully we can get there. Lord Jesus, I got two pages of notes to talk about today. So I'm going to try to stay focused. So y'all pray for me. Okay. So it's not about you. It's about the work. We have to learn how to put others before ourselves. We have to learn how to pray for people, love people, be kind to people and treat people with dignity and respect, right? We have to learn how to do that. When we're looking out for me, myself and I, we don't have time to look out for anybody else we have to look out for other people it's time out for that right we've all we've looked out enough well happy birthday kingston happy seventh birthday um so we have to we have to not make it about ourselves but make it about other people and not about me when we're looking out for uh, when we're looking out for ourselves it's me it's about what I can do. I did this. I did that. I did this. I did that. Well, it's not about that. If you're doing it with an intention for people to recognize what you're doing, then that's not love. Love is doing it without wanting somebody to recognize you or wanting somebody to give you accolades and, oh yeah, you did this and yeah. No, because your, your reward comes from God. He's looking at your life. He's looking at your walk. He's looking at your talk. And most importantly, he's looking at your heart. Are you doing it from a heart where you literally genuinely love people, where you genuinely want to see people succeed, when you genuinely want people's life to be better, right? When that's what you want, 
God can see your heart. We can look at the outward appearance. We can look at what you say. We can look at what you do. We can look at all of those things in the human sense. But God looks at our heart and he says, wow, this is a heart I can work with. Or wow, look at this heart, right? The Bible clearly tells us that the heart is deceitfully wicked. Thank you. It is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? The, the heart is this. It's, it's just nasty. It's mean. It wants to hurt people. Good morning. Thank you for tuning in. The, that's our heart. But God can look past that when you, when you really allow the love of God in your heart to the point where you're not thinking about me. How can I serve others? How can I help others? When I started this Mornings with Lady T Talk several years ago, um, the Lord told me to start it. And when I started it, I, you know, I came and I did it. I wasn't on TikTok. I was just on Facebook at the time. And, um, it was challenging because one, people come on, people don't come on. You don't get the support. People talk. Then it's like, oh, I don't know what to say, or I don't feel called. Then it was like, I don't like the way my voice. It was all of these hiccups. I made it about myself. I made it about, I can't do it because of this, that, and the other. I made it about me instead of what God called me to do. So I would come on, I would do it for a few days, and then I would stop. I would come on, I would do it for a few days, and I would stop. Then I would come, then I wouldn't come on for months, and then I would be like, oh, nobody wants to tune in and nobody wants to hear what I have to say. And I made it about myself. And so when I make it about myself, when you make it about yourself, then the people that need what you have, you're not giving them because you're making it about yourself. So I stopped and then it was a while. And then the Lord said, I told you to do this. So I started back again and I, and I did it and it was, I was doing good. I was getting, and I had tons of people was coming to me. Like, when are you going to start back your talks? I watched you every day and, and people I didn't even expect it. And I was like, um, I didn't know that you even watched me. And they were like, yeah, we watch you every single time you come live. And I'm like, wow, why you never know who you're affecting. You never know who's watching you, who's listening to you, right? I support everybody, okay? Let me just put that out there. I don't care what your what your sexual orientation is. It don't matter to me. Um, so I said, so I started back. So I started back again. And so I'm back and forth, back and forth because it, I made it about me. I made it about what I wanted. I made it about Talana instead of about the work. So it isn't a, it isn't about me putting me first. It isn't about me seeking my own and what I want. It's about me doing what God wants me to do. It's about me walking in my gifting, walking in my calling. The Bible says your gift will make room for you. But when you make it about yourself, God isn't going to make room for you anywhere because you're making room for yourself. Let him pl let him plant you. Let him send you out. Let him let him teach you how to really love love people genuinely, right? Then he gave me this grand vision of what he wanted me to do. And I'm like, God, this is so big, but it's so exciting because it's not about me. It's about me being able to help people, serve people, love people, give people hope. There's so many people out here that don't give anybody any hope that, that literally is like, um, they, they don't, there, it's all about how can it benefit me? I will do this if it can benefit me. Can we literally do something for somebody where it doesn't give us any benefit, where I don't make any money, where I don't do anything, but I can literally serve people from a place that will benefit them? Can I have a conversation with somebody just to encourage them, just to give them that, that push that they need to get through their day? Can I do that? Yes, because it's not about me. Love puts others before self. We don't do that. We do that if it benefits us. Well, it's my kids. Of course, we're going to put our kids before ourselves. Of course, we're going to do that. I'm talking about when, when you really love somebody that is unlovable, that you're like, oh my God, this person really needs love, but it's hard as heck for me to love them. It's hard as I don't know what for me to really love them through this season in their life. They are cantankerous. They are nasty. And God wants us to love them right through that season. That love will penetrate their heart. It will get in their heart and it will bring the deliverance that they need. We don't understand what people go through. I talk to people all the time. And sometimes I hear things and I'm like, wow, like it blows my mind what people go through and they're still living and they're still trying to do it. But we look at the outward, we look at their actions, we look at what they're doing. We look at how they talk and treat that. We look at that. 
But why are they like that? Are we trying to get to the bottom of it? Are we trying to understand this person? Are we saying, Lord, show me their heart. Let me see their, let me see them like you see them so that I can love them greater, right? I'll never forget praying that prayer when me and my husband were going through at 10 years of marriage, right? I prayed. I was like, Lord, please help me to see him like you do. Cause that's the only way I'm going to be able to stay in this marriage. I can't stay if you don't show me what you see in him, because what I'm looking at in my natural, physical, emotional heart, I don't want to be with this. Right. And so God showed me him in his finished state. He showed me him the anointing on his life and what God wanted for him. And I said, okay, now I can love this person. So I'm going to love him until he reached that reaches that point. Right. I'm going to let the love of God. I'm going to love him when I don't want to love him. Right. That is challenging to do. Yes, it is very hard to do. But if you allow God to fill your heart with love, it makes it easier because think about God. He does it all the time. He loves us even when we don't love him like we should, even when we don't serve him like we should, even because it's God doesn't make it about him. He's like, I'm God. I'm Jesus. I came down here and I did this and these people. No, God loves us and he's looking for every way and every opportunity to be able to move us from where we are at today to where we he wants us to be. How can we get there? We have to love. You're not even really loving people until you're loving people that you don't want to love. When you take it and make it about you, then you're selfish and you can't love people. When you make it about the work, when you make it about the assignment, God gave us a commandment to love. When we make it about the commandment to love, then it becomes easier to do. It's not easy. It's very hard, but I promise you it'll be worth it. Okay. Love doesn't fly off the handle and is not easily provoked. Listen to me. It is so easy to snap and just listen. I just had to tell him. I just had to give him a piece of my mind. I just had to let him know. Like, I don't play that. You don't mess with me. You don't back to making it about yourself. Right. It doesn't fly off the handle. It doesn't. It's not easily provoked. Provoked means to stir up purposely the need to stimulate, stimulate, to incite anger, to arouse to a feeling or action. So it's not easily provoked. We shouldn't be provoking people. It shouldn't be so easy for us to see how we can get somebody mad, get somebody angry, fly off the handle and just tell them, let me give them a piece of my mind. Well, if you keep giving people a piece of your mind, what part of your mind are you going to have left? After a while, you're not going to have anything left because you're giving people a piece of your mind today, a piece of your mind later in the day. Peace of your mind tomorrow. Good morning. Thank you for tuning in. We're always giving people love is not, it's not about you. It is not, it doesn't fly off the handle. What part will you have left? Right, right. If we keep giving it away, you're not going to have nothing left because you're giving away something that wasn't even meant to give away. You're not supposed to give away your mind, give away your peace, give away your joy. When we allow people to, to get us so riled up that we can just go off the handle, that we could just, oh, I'm just going to let them know. We're giving them a piece of us that they don't deserve. That's not worth giving to them, right? It says doesn't fly off the handle and it's not easily provoked. We should not be trying to seek to see how we can make people mad, how we can make people angry, how we can hurt people, how we can do people wrong, right? That's not our, that's not what our heart's desire should be. Our heart's desire should be, how can I help? How can I serve? How can I love? How can I move past it being about me to now making it about the other person? When we can learn to love like that, when we can learn to love like Christ and be willing to be willing to lay our life down for somebody else. Be willing to sacrifice ourselves for somebody else. And I'm not talking about being a martyr. I'm not talking about allowing yourself to be abused, anything like that. But what I'm talking about, when you allow the love of God to bring deliverance in somebody else's life, because God brought deliverance into your life with his love. Are we willing to do that same thing to love our neighbor truly as we love ourselves? A lot of us do. We don't love ourselves. So we love our neighbors the same way. Can we fall in love with us? Can we love ourselves enough to love our neighbor like we're supposed to love them? And not provoke them and not um, go try to, you know, um, just hurt them in any kind of way. Can we learn to love like that? Can the world change? It can if we decide to change. If I change and I really love people that 
I'm like, God, yo, where did this person come from? Like, I need you to deliver them. Can I really love them like that? If I do it and you do it and the next person does it and the next person does it, our world would change. But if we keep doing what God doesn't command us to do and we're doing what the devil really wants us to do and that's to spread hate and spread strife, spread envy and do all these evil things in the world, then we'll keep serving that God that devil that we have been serving for so long, right? We have to learn how to do this, right? The next one is, doesn't keep score of the sins of others. You shouldn't have a a notebook checking off, oh, they did this and writing it down. Oh, they did this and right. And then we're keeping score. And then we want to do tit for tat. Oh, you did this to me. Oh, I'm going to get you back. You cheat on me. I'm going to cheat on you back. You lie on me. I'm going to lie on you back. You steal from me. I'm going to steal back from you. When are we going to stop the madness? That is insanity. Insanity is doing the same thing, but expecting different results. I'm going to do this to you and then you do it to me. I'm going to get you back. And we're thinking that that's going to change. That's insanity. We're doing the same thing. Like, I, oh, you did this to me. Oh, I got you, sis. Oh, I got you. You did. You, you, you hurt me. I'm going to hurt you back. You're going to feel my wrath. You're going to know what I'm going through, right? No, that's not love. That's not what love does. It says it doesn't keep score or the sin of others. We shouldn't have a notebook on the side like checking off. Oh, they did this to me. I'm going to get them back. They hurt me. I'm going to hurt them back. No, love doesn't try to get somebody back. It does. It says it thinketh no evil. You got to stop keeping track of what others people's do, what other people do. You got to stop going tit for tat. You got to stop making it about you. I'm going to get you back. I'm going to do something to get you back. You got to stop thinking evil of evil ways to hurt people. Let's think of ways how we can love them, how we can have the Bible gives us a prescription. Let me go here. Romans 12 and 19 says, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place Un, but and but rather give place unto wrath for it is written vengeance is mine and i will repay saith the lord when we allow god to avenge us when we allow god to make our rights wrong our wrongs right when we allow god to to get that person back or to help that person or to deliver that person from what they're going through and we choose to love them in spite of when we choose to love i i have told you guys i am going through one of the greatest challenging seasons of my entire life where I have to love through what I'm going through. Is it easy? Absolutely not. Do I want to just scream and I want to just cry and I want to just go through? Yes. And when I want to cry and I want to scream, I do it. But I choose to love anyway. I choose to give anyway. I choose to serve anyway. Why? Because that's the great commandment is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. I love me. I love the woman that I'm becoming. I love what God wants me to do in my life. I love the calling and purpose of my life. And if I surrender and submit to my feelings and my emotions and I make it about me and what you did to me and how you hurt me, then that's what I'm saying to God. Well, God, you did this to me and God, you did that. God, you wasn't there for me. God was there for you. He's given you every opportunity to change, but we get so angry and caught up in it when he clearly says that vengeance is his. He said, I will repay, saith the Lord. You don't have to worry about it. Take your focus off of repaying and put your focus on how you can love them through the hell that they're going through. People, People are broken. People are hurting. People are going through all these different things and we want to judge them and we want to condemn them to hell and we want to do all these other things. Well, what if the tables was turned and it was you? Would you want mercy? Would you want love? Would you want kindness? Would you, when you get to a place, when you come to yourself and you say, you know what? I was wrong. I'm sorry. Can you forgive me? I ain't forgiving you. You ain't going to never change. Or can we just love a person through what they're going through? We want that. What we want, we should give, right? If we don't want that, we shouldn't give that. The next scripture is 1 Peter 3 and 9. And never return evil for evil or insult for insult. Never. The, this is the word of God. 1 Peter 3, 9. This is the out of the Amplified Version. It says never never return evil for evil or insult for insult. That means if you do me tit for tat, I'm not doing you tit for tat. If you wait now, let me, let me, let me pause here and say this. Let's make tit for tat. You trying to outdo me to love you. And I try to outdo, oh, you did this nice thing for me. Let me do this nice thing for you. Oh, you serve me. No, let me serve you. Oh, you serve me breakfast in bed. I'm going to serve you breakfast in bed. Oh, you did this nice thing for me. Oh, I'm going to do this nice thing for you. Let that be tit for tat, not evil for evil. 
You hurt me, I'm going to hurt you back. You did me dirty, I'm going to do you dirty back. You stabbed me in the back, I'm going to stab you in the back. That's not, that cannot be our attitude, okay? Never, it says, and never return evil for evil or insult for insult. Avoiding scalding, berating, or any kind of abuse. That is abuse when we do that. Tit for tat, you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you back. You did this to me, I'm going to do this to you. That's tit for tat. It, it tells us don't do that. Any kind of abuse, that is abuse. When we misuse people, when we mishandle people, that is abuse. When you try to get people back, when you try to make people pay for their wrong, that's abuse. We have to stop the cycle of abuse in our life. Stop the cycle of hurt and, and, and getting people back in our life. We have to learn how to love past that. That takes the Holy Ghost. That takes God himself showing you and teaching you how to do it. We have his word to show us when they beat him unrecognizable in the garden. And he said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. Father, don't hold it to them. They don't know what they're doing. When he's decided to love us past what we were doing, love us past the, the hurt that we caused him. When he was in the garden of Gethsemane, he said, Lord, if there's another way, if there's another way, let this cup pass, God. Let, let if, if we could do it another way, let's do it another way, God, because this hurts. This is painful. I don't want to keep do, dealing with this. I don't want to keep going through this. He said, but if it's not another way, not what I want, it's not about me. It's not about what I want, but it's about with you what you want. Not my will, but your will be done on the earth. That's what we got to get. Lord, this is not about me, but this is about your work, your will. Let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Let me succumb and submit to what, what you want in my life and not what I want. It's not about me, but it's about the work. But on the contrary, give a blessing. <laughs> Give a blessing. It says, pray for one another's well-being, contentment, and protection. When somebody's going through, it says, don't do evil for evil or insult for insult, but give a blessing. Be a blessing. How can you be a blessing in somebody's life? How can you help somebody that's going through? How can you love them through what they're going through? That's what the Bible tells us. That's what God wants us to do. That's what we got to learn how to do. That's something we got to practice doing. We might fail today, but you say, what? You know what? I failed today, but tomorrow I will not fail. I will learn how not to do evil for evil. I will learn how to love unconditionally and despite how I'm felt. I will not make it about myself, but I will make it about the other person, how I can serve them, how I can love them, right? Pray for them. Pray for their protection. Pray for their well-being. That's not easy when that person hurts you. That's not easy when that person did you wrong. That's not easy when you want that person to pay. It's not easy, but bless them anyway. For you have been called for this very purpose. You and I have been called for this very purpose. This purpose to love people beyond our pain. This purpose to love people beyond what we feel like we can't do. You can do whatever you put your mind to do. You can do whatever. Listen, if you put your mind that you want to bring damnation or hurt somebody back, if you put your mind to it long enough, your mind is so powerful, it will do it. It will find a way. And it will do it. And then your flesh will be satisfied, but your spirit will be injured. Your spirit will be hurt. Your spirit will be crushed because that's the, the wrong way, the wrong method. But when you can really truly love somebody through the pain, through the hurt, through the abuse that they have done or been through in their life, you God will reward you so greatly. He said, because I, you've been called for this very purpose that you might inherit a blessing from God that brings well-being, happiness, and protection. We need that in our life. So we have to give it. We have to show mercy. We have to show, give some grace. Allow people, allow the love of God in you to resonate in other people, not keep you stuck, not keep you bound, not keep you in a place where you can't move forward. But you got to get to a place where you can allow the love of God to move mountains in your life. Yes, you do. You got to do what's best for you. Matthew 5 and 44. And I think this is the amplified too. I didn't write it down. But I say unto you, <laughs> listen to this. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Miss T Lady T, 
How am I supposed to love my enemies? That don't even make sense to my mind. Absolutely, I agree with you. But if the Bible says it, then we have to believe it. If the Bible says it, then you have to, you have to do what the Bible says. It says, but I say unto you, and this is the Lord speaking, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you and pray for them, which despitefully use you and persecute you. I want that to sit right there for just a second. This is probably one of my favorite scriptures because this makes us accountable to God because I want to hate my enemies. I want to curse them that, 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 that curse me. I don't want to do good to you because you hurt me. I do not want to do good to you because you hurt me. You despitefully use me and persecute you and you want me to love you. Are you kidding me? God, what kind of foolishness is this? But when you think about it, the verse I said before, he called us for this very purpose that we might inherit a blessing. But the only way we can inherit a blessing is when we do what the scripture says. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. That takes love. It takes real love when somebody does something so detrimental, so hurtful, so hateful to you to love them and pray for them and do good to them. That takes love. That's what I could say about that. That takes real love. That's what God wants us to walk in. He wants us to walk in that real love. To understand this statement about love, right? The Greek word here is agape. It's not um, so it's not so much the matter of emotion that we're doing this out of the benefit of the other person. That is, it's having an unselfish concern for another and a willingness to speak the best for another. God wants us to operate in agape love. He wants us to operate in a love that can change the life of the others around us. I'm not going to get to, I could do this last one. Okay. Yeah, I got to do this last one. That's where God wants us to get to that place where we can unselfishly unselfishly love people like they're supposed to be loved. I'm only giving you what the scripture says. Not what Talana says, because if it was up to me, I wouldn't teach you this. Because in my natural fleshly way, you hurt me, I want to hurt you back. That's natural. That's in the flesh. But those that are in the flesh cannot please God. When we walk in our flesh, God cannot be pleased. We got to walk in the spirit so he could be pleased. When we walk in the spirit, then we have to do what the word says. The last one I'm going to talk about today is doesn't revel when others gravel. Rejoices not in iniquity. Ravel means to take intense pleasure or satisfaction in. Means you should not be satisfied and happy and woo, they got what they deserve. Did you see what they're going through? That's what they get. No, no, no. We, our hearts should break because this person is going through. I've People have come to me and said this and that about people. And I'm like, oh my God. I My heart breaks for them because I have such high hopes for people. And I really want to see people succeed. And when I hear stuff, I'm not like, yeah, that's what they get. That's what they get. They, they deserve that. They done did wrong for so many years. That's what they get. No, that's not what God wants us to do. He says, we're not taking pleasure in that. We're not satisfied with that. We should be dissatisfied. We should be helping people. We should be figuring out how we can do this to make their life better. To gravel is to put oneself over to what is base or unworthy. Making people feel unworthy. Making people feel bad. 
wallowing in the, you know, stirring the pot up and doing it. No, that's not what he wants. And iniquity is a wicked act or thing, sin. When some, don't rejoice when somebody's sinning. Don't rejoice when somebody's all wallowed up and tap, tap, tied up and tangled up and what they're going. Don't wallow in that. Don't be happy. Don't be satisfied. Say, how can I help them? How can I pray for them? How can I support you? Good morning. Thank you for tuning in. Right? In other words, you're not happy when other people are down, when they're hurting, when they're going through something. Don't take pleasure in other people's destruction, demise, or failures, or whenever, or whatever they may be going through. Don't take pleasure in that. Don't be satisfied with that. Don't try to hurt people, right? Don't do that. You're, you're, you're saying that you're happy that they're going through that. Don't be happy when other people are going through when they're when they're when they're down, when they're out, when they're at their lowest point, don't be happy for them. Don't be satisfied with their their hurt and their pain. What can I do to help you get through what you're going through? How can I love you through it? How can I pray for you? How can I serve you? That is what love is. Love is not what we talked about. That is not what love is. It's not about hurting people. You're not happy saying that's what they get. Finally, justice. Finally, they got what was coming to them. Finally, yes, they did. But they have to live with their self. They have to, and they're already having to live with what they did. And there's just generally evil people out there that really just are going to be lost. And unfortunately, that's sad for them. But we shouldn't aid to that. We shouldn't be looking on how we can just... It, it, put more on them and make them feel even worse. If somebody's feeling bad and they're trying to change their life, we should do everything in our power to love them through it. This is not love when we're generally happy when somebody's going through. That's not love. We have to learn how to walk in true love to be able to help people. I talked about what love isn't. It's not always seeking oneself. It's not, what can I do for me? Me first. It doesn't fly off the handle. It's not easily provoked. It doesn't keep score of other people's wrongdoings or their sins. And it doesn't think any evil towards people. And it doesn't revel or gravel or rejoice when people are going through in their iniquity, when they're in their sin, when they're going through their work is worse or hardest or darkest season in their life. You're not wishing their demise. You're not hoping and praying that God would just condemn them to hell and send them to hell. That's not what God wants us to do. God wants us to love people. He wants us to pray for them. He wants us to, we read it in the scriptures, y'all. Read it for yourself. Go to Romans 12 and 19, 1 Peter 3 and 9 and Matthew 5, 44. Read it for yourself. That is what God wants us to do. Pray for them. Love them despite what they're going through. People already got enough going on in their life that they don't need more hatred coming from other people. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Oh. Maybe. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I thank you for um, taking the time out of your morning to um, to come on my mornings with Lady T talks and and um, and join in with me. I thank you for that. I thank you for coming back and watching the replay and taking time out of your day to listen to what the Lord had to say today. So I appreciate you. I love you. I really do genuinely love you, and um, I appreciate you for taking time out. Um, in the way of announcements. <laughs> Every single morning, I go live Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. I invite you to come back every morning and tune in. Um, sometimes I have to change the time, but I do go live. So make sure you follow me on all social media platforms. If you go to the link in my bio on TikTok, you'll see um, my Instagram. You'll see subscribe to my YouTube page. Um Go follow me on Instagram. If you follow me on Facebook, just let me know you're my TikTok friend and I'll accept you. I get a lot of weird, crazy requests. Um, and I know some of them are scammers. So I want to make sure that I'm accepting real people. And we wouldn't have any friends in common. So usually if we don't have friends in common, I don't accept you. So if you did inbox, if you did send me a Facebook request, just give me a quick inbox and say you're my TikTok friend and I'll accept you um, as my friend over there. 
but Instagram, you could definitely follow me and I'll follow you back on there. Um, follow me on TikTok. I'll follow back here too. Um, so make sure that you're following me on all social media platforms. Make sure that you subscribe to my email list. Go to ladyttalks.com. That is L-A-D-Y-T-A-L-K-S. L-A-D-Y-T-T-A-L-K-S is two T's. Um, and dot com and subscribe to my email list every single morning i send out an email at 5 a.m um just with a little encouragement um so and when you do that you'll get another email from me with my county link in it so that you can schedule your free 30 minute clarity call with me i give you free a free 30 minute um zoom virtual call with me where we can sit down and talk and see how i can serve you and help you through whatever it is that you're going through all right so you can get that um with me if you go to and subscribe to my email list tomorrow, you still have time tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Every single month I do group empowerment sessions. Um, and this month we're talking about belief stack. So you want to register for that. It is absolutely free. Um, all you have to do is go to the link in my bio, go to my calendar and um, go to where it says belief stack and then fill it out. You'll get the Zoom link. You'll get everything you need to to participate. If you're having any trouble finding anything that I talked about, please don't hesitate to inbox me. I will send you what you need, okay? Um, if you have not gotten a copy of my books, you want to get your copy of my books. I'm very intentional about changing your mindset. You have to do something different. So I've developed my 31-day um, devotional and my 90-day journal to help you endeavor on your mindset changes. Talk. It talks about... Um, I will open right up to mindset thinking task. It talks about Philippians four and eight, um, how we're supposed to think on the scripture, how we change our mind. Um, it, it gives you things on um, winning and it's possible It be fearless and all these other different amazing things. 31 days can get you started on a, the journey that you want. It is $12. All you have to do is go to the link in my bio. You'll see the picture of my books together. It'll take you to my Etsy account. All you have to do is go there, hit the link, order the books, and I'll send them out today. So you want to make sure you do that. This is my 31-day devotional. This is my 90-day journal. And in this journal, it focuses on the power of your I am affirmation. What are you saying about yourself? I start my broadcast with this every day. Our confessions, our affirmations. What are we saying? If we want our life to change, we have to say something different. Okay. So, and then you can journal whatever you want to do. And in the back of the book, I have, um, some affirmations. It's like five or six pages. I never count them of affirmations that you can use in your life that can help you. This is $15. If you get them together, it's $22. You can save $5 and I will mail them out and sign your copy today. So you want to get my books. You want to get them because they will change your life. It literally is my life's work in a book. Um, and I do this every day. I journal, I write my I am affirmations. I have them in my phone. I'm, I can teach you how to change your life if that's what you want to do. Um, so make sure you get your get my books, um, get your copy today. Um, if you want to sow a seed into my life, you can do that by going to Cash App. And um, it's Lady T Talks. That's simple. I make everything very simple for you. So check out my website, subscribe to my email list, order your copies of my books, share this on your timeline, tag somebody in this video. And if you're watching the replay, hashtag replay. Heavenly Father, I thank you and I praise you for all of those that tuned into this video today. Those that ask specifically for prayer. I don't know if she's still on here. Let's see if I see her name. The lady that asked for prayer. Lord, you know who she is. And I ask you to touch her now, Lord, whatever she stands in the need of. Meet the need in her life today in Jesus' name. Touch those, oh God, that will come back and watch the replay, oh God. I pray that you will bless them as well. I pray, oh God, that you will seal the word in our heart and our mind because the enemy comes immediately to just to steal the word out of our life. But we thank you that you will seal it in our heart and our, our minds that it may penetrate and remind us throughout the day who we are and how we are to act and become as your people, oh God. I ask you that you will fill us with your love even the more today help us to love despite our feelings and our emotions and help us to walk in your love and pray for people that despitefully use us oh god help us to walk in your word today god touch your people today heal deliver and set free move in their life manifest yourself in jesus name amen once again thank you guys again for tuning in i appreciate you for taking the time out of your day to tune into my broadcast 
tune in tomorrow it's um saturday i will be live i'm probably gonna come live at seven tomorrow because i need to go out and do some stuff so tune in tomorrow at 7 a.m i'll be live tomorrow at seven i will put the notification on my um tiktok um and i will also post a flyer on facebook and instagram for those of you who are watching on that platform thank you again have an amazing day on purpose i love you guys and may god bless you on this day Bye bye